I previously alluded to the fact that right-wing politicians and pundits are absolutely responsible for the mass shooting that took place at Club Q in Colorado Springs because for months now, they have been screaming at the top of their lungs about the danger that LGBTQ plus people poses to children and others. And now to see violence being taken up against this community, for them to react in the way that they're reacting it's predictable, yes, but it's still so disturbing, and they really have a lot of nerve. So let's look at Bobo first and foremost. So she tweeted this out as a lawmaker from the state of Colorado where this tragedy took place. The news out of Colorado Springs is absolutely awful. This morning, the victims and their families are in my prayers. This lawless violence needs to end and end quickly. Now, some of the victims who died are trans. Lauren Boebert, let me remind you, has used her position of power and influence to demonize trans people ruthlessly and spread lies about this community. Let's look at a couple of examples of what she's tweeted. Quote, trans women, also known as men, will be forced to sign up for the draft. Looks like Joe Biden has just officially confirmed what a woman is and what a woman isn't. She also tweeted out, the so-called Equality Act forces girls to share locker rooms with boys, destroys girls' sports, takes children away from their parents, and forces doctors to perform taxpayer-funded abortions. She shared a picture of Dr. Rachel Levine, who is the assistant health secretary, who happens to be a trans woman, saying, welcome to woke medicine, America, because I guess that if you're trans, then you practice uh, woke medicine. I don't even know what that means. She also shared a clip of her appearance on Fox News, claiming the American people deserve to know if the Biden regime is paying for the mutilation of children who are gender confused. Now, since she focuses on trans people so much, you would think that she knows that trans people aren't being mutilated, specifically trans children aren't being mutilated. She knows what she's saying is not truthful. She knows that what she's doing is stoking hatred and hysteria about this community, but yet she has the audacity to claim that she's praying for the victims. Go fuck yourself, Lauren Bubbert. You are a disgusting, pathetic excuse for a person and you should be ashamed of yourself. If you actually felt any sympathy whatsoever, then right now you'd be introspective and think maybe I'm at least partially culpable for the disgusting rhetoric that I've been using against this community that's already under attack. Now, I think that Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez really had the best response to Bobo here saying, you have played a major role in elevating anti-LGBT plus hate rhetoric and anti-trans lies while spending your time in Congress blocking even the most common sense gun safety laws. You don't get to thoughts and prayers your way out of this. Look inward and change. And AOC is exactly correct here. For for someone who has spent months demonizing this community to pretend as if you feel bad for them when your rhetoric has led to this, I mean, the nerve. You have the audacity to make that tweet, Lauren Boebert. The best move for her right now is to just hide her face and shut the fuck up after the things that she's said about trans people and LGBTQ plus people more broadly. But she's not alone. So we're going to get to some of the responses from the right. But first, let's see what they've been saying with regard to LGBTQ plus people. Just give you a little bit of a taste of the lies and hysteria they've been spreading for the past couple of months. So let's say you were interested in sexualizing children and unfortunately some people are, what would you do? You might have a drag queen story hour. If you don't see that as teetering on the edge of losing civilization, then you and I just disagree. Pernicious and sick drag queen story hours. Libs of TikTok, one of the most informative accounts on Twitter, and because it is so informative, it keeps getting banned. Adult male uh, putting on women's clothing uh, and dancing and talking about sexual themes with other people's children. Drag queen story time. Don't want them in preschool teaching them to twerk. Why would any parent allow their child to be sexualized by an adult man with a fetish for kids? A sort of pedophilic, predatory, farm system that the groomers have set up. They want to sexualize children. This is all designed to put a wedge between parents and their children. It's up to all of us to fight back against that tooth and nail. What's happened to us? I mean, honestly, what has happened to us? Throw them in prison and, and whenever they get out, if they do get out, put them on the sex offender registry for life. A reckoning is coming. If anyone here is more like Hitler, most like Hitler, one could argue, it's these people abusing children. Stopping it is not a gentle or a painless process. The farther along the cancer is, the more aggressive you have to be in fighting. People should push back against this. And of course, people should arm themselves with the literature and the people in their own words who have advocated for this uh, uh, deeply disturbing sexualization of children. Yeah, people should definitely arm themselves. I agree with that. 
So ask yourself this, when you see that rhetoric and those lies, just get a small taste of it. Is it really that surprising that some deranged lunatic might be worked into a frenzy and actually take up arms against this community? No, of course it's not surprising. It's predictable. Many of us predicted that this, this would happen. There's been nonstop harassment against LGBTQ plus people, queer spaces for months now as a result of hate mongers like Chaya Raichik of Libs of TikTok and Matt Walsh. So it's not shocking to see that all of that hate has led to this. And it's not like demonizing queer people is a new thing for the right. It's just that over the course of the last couple of months, they've gotten a little bit louder and they've kind of honed the demonization to where rather than trying to attack queer adults, they're trying to claim that really queer adults are a danger to children. And so if, you know, we tell you that they're a danger to children and somebody takes up violence against queer people to protect children, then perhaps, you know, maybe that's justified. That's not what they're saying, but that's the subtext. But of course, in response to this tragedy, they're not taking responsibility. In fact, they're apoplectic that anyone would dare blame them. Can you believe that? So let's see what they said here. Matt Walsh tweeted out, leftists are using a mass shooting to try and blackmail us into accepting the castration and sexualization of children. Again, lying in the tweet. These people are just beyond evil. I have never felt more motivated to oppose everything they stand for with every fiber of my being. Despicable scumbags. Candace Owen tweeted, I just want to make sure I'm correct in understanding that the left is using the tragedy in Colorado to make the argument that unless conservative get on board with experimenting on children's genitals with puberty blockers, then nightclub shootings will continue to happen. Ben Shapiro writes, the quest by the Democratic leadership and media to link a horrifically evil shooting at a Colorado gay club to anyone who doesn't support a progressive social agenda is ongoing and terrible for the country. It's a cynical game only one side plays and it's trash. So with the straight face, they're denying culpability. They're honestly saying, who, me? You think I'm responsible? I mean, why would I be responsible? I've only been lying and demonizing this community for months, claiming that children's hospitals are mutilating the genitalia of kids. But I mean, like, why would you think I'm responsible for all of this hate after I've whipped people up, people up into a frenzy? I, I mean, they are so shameless. And in that compilation that we watched, they mentioned libs of TikTok and of course, Chaya Raichik, the owner of this account, is also denying culpability, but you can draw a direct line between what she tweets about and things that happen in the, in the real world. So, for example, a data analyst pointed out that hospitals don't generally get a ton of engagement on Twitter. That all changes, however, when right-wing propagandist libs of TikTok tweets about them, resulting in a deluge of mostly hostile replies and mentions. Here's what that looks like in graph form, and you see the activity. They add, unsurprisingly, the same thing happens when libs of TikTok tweets about a school or a school district. The school or district's previously obscured Twitter account gets swarmed by libs of TikTok's followers. And the same is true with Matt Walsh when he specifically targets hospitals. So they mention hospitals here, but let's talk about Boston Children's Hospital. So that was the first target when it comes to children's hospitals by these right-wing propagandists. Now, they claim that because Boston Children's Hospital provides gender-affirming care to trans youth, they were mutilating the genitals and castrating children at this hospital. So these lies, of course, whipped people up into a frenzy, which led to Boston Children's Hospital getting a bomb threat, and the bomb threats have not stopped. Within the last week, Boston Children's Hospital had to be evacuated three different times due to constant bomb threats. So correlation does equal causation. And again, just hours after the anti-LGBTQ plus shooting in Colorado, Libs of TikTok was already fear-mongering about a different organization from the same state where the shooting took place, claiming that there was a drag show that was supposedly endangering children. So I need you to understand that these people know exactly what they're doing. They know the effect that they have in the real world when they spread these lies. And they are lies. They know that they're lying. Just last week, Matt Walsh was fact-checked on Joe Rogan's podcast, spreading lies about trans children. They know exactly what they're doing and the blood is on their hands. But if you think that knowing that the blood is on their hands, and they do know this, by the way, but if you think that knowing that the blood is on their hands is going to lead to them reevaluating their life choices and being a little bit introspective and perhaps reining in the lies, no, because again, this is what they wanted. 
if you think that they're going to feel bad that queer people died as a result of their rhetoric, they're not because this is what they want. They want queer people to die. They've made that abundantly clear. And any way that they can get queer people to die is a victory for them. They don't care how it happens, right? If they can whip up some lunatic into a frenzy and they do a mass shooting, that's a win for them. If they can deny gender affirming care to trans youth, knowing that that increases suicidal ideation and these trans kids end up killing themselves, that's a win for them. They want queer people dead. These are genocidal maniacs and people need to understand that. It's not a coincidence that hate crimes have increased. It's not a coincidence that queer spaces have been attacked and harassed and infiltrated by homophobes and transphobes. This is all happening because these propagandists are inciting this hatred. These people, libs of TikTok, Matt Walsh, Candace Owens, they know exactly what they're doing. They know the effect that their rhetoric has, and they're not going to stop because a hate crime was committed. They're going to only continue because this is validation that what they're doing works, right? So what we have to do is push back fiercefully 